This episode of the podcast is brought to you by KC Consulting. Has your cannabis brand's account been shut down by Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube for violating their quote-unquote community guidelines? If so, it's important that you have an agency partner that's hyper-focused on helping your company navigate through the uncharted waters that you've been forced to endure. KC Consulting is a premier social media marketing agency based in Dallas, Texas that specializes in strategy, content creation, channel management, paid advertising, graphic design, and SEO services. Services. With over 10 years of experience by providing their clients with strategic guidance, support, and content development that capitalizes on the power of digital media to boost awareness and create a lasting impact, KC Consulting is your premier partner. Give them a call at 972-310-7471 or email the team at social at kcconsulting.co. Add value, not noise. KC Consulting. Hello, my fellow people of the plant. Kevin Carrillo here, and welcome to another episode of the Cannabinoid Connects podcast. My guest today is Brian Higuera, president at Echo Connection. Brian Higuera, how are you, sir? Good, good, good. And you, Kevin? I'm doing well today. Thank right, you so much right. for making time for us and my audience. I appreciate it. Oh, no, thank you for having me. It's a very, very appreciated. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm excited because um, we'll talk first about your, your company, Echo Connection, which is a nonprofit organization that aims to educate and, ins- and support those pursuing cannabinoids uh, for their therapeutic benefits and uh, for a trustworthy, safe environment. And as we know, um, there's a lot of products out there that, you know, may contain little to no, you know, CBD, or there's a snake oil out there that has no CBD in it. And it's really important work that y'all are doing in terms of advocacy and really educating the consumer around the efficacy of CBD specifically. Yes, that is correct. And when I started out with this with my daughter, you know, about seven years ago, um, it's much better today than it is than it was then. But it's still it's still difficult to find uh, reliable sources that are consistent, etc. That's why Echo Connection. Uh, I feel very blessed to be connected to the company that I originally started using with Sadie. You know, <laughs> was mm-hmm. uh, Hemp Meds and uh, Medical Marijuana Incorporated and that CBD was available consistently. It's what uh, her medical doctor, that her medical marijuana doctor recommended was a CBD product and it was a real scientific hemp oil. So we've been on that ever since. Uh, before I ever met them, we tried different products, uh, et cetera. None of them really seemed to work. And SD, one of the local testing companies got to know me real well because I was concerned being a father and not having a lot of advice on how to do this, what to use. You would hear all these stories of, yeah, what you're buying has metal in it and all these different substances, et cetera. So the testing lab got to know me very well. And every time I took down you know, any, any uh, medical marijuana incorporated products, they tested me, I mean, within a 0.01 of what their test was telling us, you know, what the label would say. So. I got very confident in that, and yeah, I mean, it's uh, still kind of wild, wild west out there. Right. You know, with, with different stuff, you can go to a pharmacy. You you have a medical card to get, or what you get at a gas station now. You know all those different scenarios. Yeah, you got to be careful with, with where you're getting your product, like how how the product is sourced, it's cultivated. I mean, it's how it's tested, right? All that is important. Yeah. And so um, let's let's take a step back. And so you kind of, I guess got on your journey to cannabis uh, by using as a therapeutic solution for your daughter, Sadie. Is that right? That is correct. To to be 100% honest, um, it was to see her off compassionately. They had told us there's nothing else we can do for Sadie. Her seizures are, you know, there was more than 300 a day. Um, You know, that's... uh, Sorry, I have to get a little off track here with no. n- not a, a, a lot of the, the laws and stuff around what I can say it works for and not works for, you know, it is a real bummer. But 
Um, anyway, she had severe uh, issues, epilepsy being one of them. Um, the medical field was basically given up on her. You know, I'd ask, hey, occupational therapy and physical therapy, can we get this for my daughter? And it was always, uh, I've got to be honest with you and you got to be honest with yourself. It'd be wasted services on Sadie's. You know, she doesn't respond. I'm like, she used to, you know, I used to see her. I used to see her eyes. I used to see her smile. Like, you know, I used to see all these things. And then as more and more medications got piled on, the less and less and less we saw of her, you know, so uh, when she was eight and a half months old, her neurologist says there's nothing else we can do. Wow. Um, she had been overdosed four times. One time my wife had to go that, go through that by herself. Um, you can imagine it, it's pretty heartbreaking when you're watching that. And, and, you know, the medical field is doing what they can with the tools they're given. Right. Um, so they approached us, told us to be her hero and give her medication that would, that would end her drug for us to be compassionate in that way. And I just dumbfounded. I'm like, I'm sitting here, a doctor's telling me who's supposed to help me like with my daughter's life. And she's just, she's a wonderful doctor. I mean, don't get me wrong. And uh, she said she would give us one week to decide. And on the way home, Sadie had a grand mal seizure and I pull over on the side of the road with my wife and I told her, you know, we got to try cannabis. And uh you know, I told her marijuana, that's what we're used to calling it. My wife is uh, very, very uh, Hispanic value. She was raised outside of Guadalajara, Mexico. And over there, you know, the marijuana, marijuana is what they call somebody that's- Marijuanos, like, yeah, you're yeah, always- Marijuanos is like, you're, yeah. you're, that's like worse than, you know, doing methamphetamine sometimes to them over there. I grew up in yeah. Belen, New Mexico, so I've heard Meriwanos plenty of times. Yes. Times? yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, she was like, I don't think we can do that. And, you know, and I'm like, okay, look at our other option. She goes, okay, let's try it. So I immediately, as soon as we got home, just started calling around, like, you know, how do I get this for an eight and a half month old? I got to get a medical marijuana card. At least we're in California. You know, we got that going for us. Right. So I call around and probably seven, eight different places. Some would laugh and giggle like, yeah, eight and a half month old baby. Are you serious? I'm like, yes, I'm serious. Yeah, I'm hundred, dead serious. Yeah. Yeah, dead serious. That's what it amounts to. And uh, uh, Centric Wellness, Dr. Raby, bless his heart, said, come on in. I can't promise you anything, but I'll see you guys. And I'll take a look at Sadie and, and see what we can do. He gave us a card for 30 days and... A little bit of advice on like, okay, a G tube. I don't know how to even begin to tell you guys how to do something like that. You know, he just basically said start with something the size of a grain of rice and then go from there. So you know that's what we did, and it was uh, immediate changes in Sadie's life. And you can imagine immediate changes in Sadie's life makes immediate changes in the rest of the family's life. Absolutely. And what, what specifically were some of those changes that you noticed? The eyes, you know, stopped twitching, the seizure slowed down. Um, eventually, we just started switching to, you know, CBD, and she uses a THC product. So eventually, we found the right mixture. But um, yeah, I mean, just noticed everything, her heartbeat, you know, Sadie can't talk or anything like that. But she, she has her way of communicating and, you know, just something I'll mention now before I forget, just last school year, the school finally recognized that Sadie vocalizes with purpose. She doesn't speak, but she vocalizes with purpose. That was huge. I mean, mm -hmm. we had known that since day one, like, hey, Sadie, and, you know, we didn't know that she would follow and track us, but not many doctors or anybody would acknowledge that. And uh, to have the school district and then a doctor on top of it agree, and it, it's pretty big, you know. So, so changes like that. Sadie wasn't asleep anymore, you know. The, the, her sisters would always say, "Oh, how Sadie? She's asleep." Well, she was on so much drugs that, yeah, she was. You know, she was just sedated. Right, right. But, she uh, was just a like a vegetable, kind of what those opioids and those pain medications do to you, yeah, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Yep. And then all the, the side effects, she was bloated and red. And I mean, it was, you know, like my, like my wife says, 
here I was trying to save my daughter's life, thinking I'm trying to save his daughter's life and I was making it worse, you know. The damage we did to the kidneys and other, other parts of her body, you know, luckily that's all starting to change. Things that, you know, doctors can't explain, you know, uh, where did her tumors go? You know, part of Sinjal Gideon syndrome is they create lots of tumors. She had one removed from her, the bottom of the base of her spine where your cord tethers, usually there was one there. Excuse me, but um, one at the base of her skull, at the top of the, the neck and the spine joint here and one in her liver that couldn't be operated on. Nine months later, after using the combinations of oils, they're gone. Jeez. You know, wow. and, it, and it, it's heartbreaking to see that this isn't being studied. You know, that, that, that people rely on stories like mine, you know, and other families getting out there and, and, you know, people like you that are so graciously sharing stories and getting out there that this stuff is happening, you know, and that's why... To be honest, when they asked me to be a president of Echo, I was scared. I was like, no, you know, that's not me. I got a regular 40 hour a week job. I work with my hands, you know, I'm a building engineer, <laughs> operating engineer. And, uh, you know, it all came down to, hey, you know, the, the families. Yeah. So, you know, I'm like, hey, if we can get, you know, not only is it's, I would love to start getting the rest of the Echo family stories out there yet. My daughter's, you know, got a good story and, and sort of a lot of the other ones that, you know, can help with different stuff, different things. But absolutely. Um, I know, I know that you're probably thinking like, man, this might be this position might be out of my wheelhouse or I'm, I'm too busy already with my full time job. But I mean, <laughs> you're you're really uniquely positioned to to be where you're at because of that firsthand experience you've had you know, seeing your daughter and the changes that she encountered just from switching to CBD from, from those traditional medications that we've been, we've been on for so long, you know? Um, So it it makes a lot of sense that they would want to put you in a position like that. And so, you know, and you talk about the lack of, of research, right. And, and that is so true. And in fact, some of the, or most of the studies that have been commissioned by the government and, and other entities within the government have always focused on the bad for the most part, right? Or they've kind of looked at, at things that are the negative uh, or the downside of cannabis use, but like from a medical perspective and, and these doctors seeing your daughter in the condition that she was in, like, what, what do you think their reluctance was to think of cannabis as an alternative medicine? Is it the lack of understanding? Is it the stigma that's attached to it? Like, what do you think it was? A lot of it is, is just their, their oath of office that they took to be a metal practitioner. They can't, they can't give you advice on it. They can't recommend it. When we went back a week later, you know, our, our neurologist gave us one week. We had uh, already started saving on that oil too. The second day after seeing her, it was the next day. You know, I, <laughs> we were, you know, at a at a pharmacy saying, "Yeah, I've got that." Like I'm on my way. You know, I don't care how far you are. Right, we're gonna I'm get it because it's working. Yeah, right, yeah, it's working. You know? so, yeah. So she had been on it six days when on that seven days when we went back to see her. We walked in in about thirty to forty five seconds after looking at Sadie. She said, "What are you guys doing?" And I said, to be honest with you, we're using uh, marijuana, specifically CBD made from industrial hemp. And uh, she goes, why didn't you talk to me about this before? And I said, you never mentioned it. And you gave us the option of being her hero and ending her life. And she goes, I'm amazed. She goes, I can tell Sadie right now is a completely different baby. Let's start fast tracking her off of the Kepra, which is the worst one. Um, so yeah, she jumped on board and the, be- the, the most biggest thing she, like she said was she cannot recommend it, discuss it, anything like that. Cause she has the, could use her license, you know, which she worked so hard to get, which I could understand. But in the end, she said, can I have your phone number to give to another family? Wow. That, you know, that right there shows, you know, some compassion and stuff when they're not allowed to. Her primary care doctor, the, you know, which is at UCSD, he wrote a letter to our insurance company early on, like, look, this family got their child off all these medications. Why can't you reimburse them? 
you know, because he was asked how we're doing and stuff. We're like, oh, great. And he's like, well, how much does this cost? I'm like, well, that's a huge thing for us because <laughs> right. it's so expensive. <laughs> and, you know, when you're dealing with, you know, products from, from Canaway and Medical Marijuana Incorporated that are that, uh, uh, that, that much quality, you know, triple right. tested, et cetera, it comes with the price tag. Even all of it does. All of it's expensive. And uh, wow. so... I'm sorry, I got a little off track there, but no, you're good. It's yeah. it's it's just incredible that even the the physician that you were talking with initially, that that lady, and she kind of yeah. she saw an immediate change. It sounds like in your daughter because she asked, "Well, what is what's going on? What are you doing different?" Right? Yeah. Because, immediate. And that's what you were talking about with her eyes and the way that she was just more awake, right? Mm -hmm. So so let's talk about. CBD research in its current state. So like, has it improved over the years? Is there more peer reviewed research studies that we can point to and, and cite as sources? Or is it mostly anecdotal kind of testimonial data that you've shared right now with with your daughter? And of course, I've had other guests on that have, have yeah. shared similar experiences. Yeah. I, I still don't see a lot of the testing done, you know, which a lot of it has to do with, with schedule one, you know, being a schedule one drug doctor, when the doctor wrote us that letter to the insurance company, I was surprised they even going to, they even replied, but that was their reply to schedule one drug. We can't, you know, federally until that's removed, we can't do anything. I've, you know, I posted that, that reply on my, you know, Facebook page and stuff like that before. And, uh, yeah, it's crazy. You know, they, they at least got to open some doors for us. You hear a little bit more of some of the big universities, you know, starting to be able to get some little foot in the door. But it's not not the big studies like you see Israel, you know, doing a, a lot of when I when I started looking up stuff for Sadie was like, how can I translate this page from, you know, <laughs> from Israel to, to our language? And there was a lot of other countries that were mainly it was way ahead of us you know right so, which is which there's a lot of big money that to me if you ask me you know that doesn't want it to right that they're kind of stopping it well it's the a whole, threat it's a threat to industry right i mean you talked yeah. about it earlier how many medications was sadie on that were you know super expensive did a large amount of detriment to her body in various ways right yeah. um yeah. as opposed to something that's an alternative natural remedy um, that actually is good for you and helps her, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. I mean, yeah, yeah. so, so um, I, I want to get your thoughts on like, so you've seen again, like to, to go back, you've seen firsthand the efficacy of CBD as a, as a therapeutic alternative for your daughter and even with others within echo connection. Right. Yeah. Um, but is it also challenging at the same time to communicate the efficacy with the lack of FDA consumer oversight and the fact that CBD is basically in every kind of product you can think of nowadays? I think I saw like a CBD pillow the other day, you know, which yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's just yeah. cr crazy, right? And so, uh, you know, in addition to the lack of, of uh, or the, in addition to it being a schedule one narcotic listed as such, you know, the lack of, of consumer oversight has to be challenging as well to, to demonstrate that efficacy. Oh, yes, most definitely. You know, the, there's consumer oversight. Like you say it's all wild, wild west right now. The, the FDA, unfortunately, with the new administration, I don't think we're going to get, you know, too much further than that uh, than we are today. Um, he just uh, never was, you know, for... For legalizing marijuana and and removing that from the schedule one drug but uh i'm sorry kevin i've got thrown off there for a minute no you're good i was yeah. just asking about you know the uh the fda's regulate i mean the lack of fda regulation currently and how it's difficult for you and others within echo connection to demonstrate the efficacy of of the cannabinoid and how it helps Oh, yes, yes. If the FDA did have a little more, you know, set of rules that would allow to say, hey, you know what, this looks like it's working for, for this issue or this syndrome. Why can't we make a little more effort to study that, you know, and, and come out with something? The closest I've seen to something like that is Epidiolex, which is, you know, something that's, uh, well, I shouldn't even mention the name, but 
something that's an isolate <laughs> and it's 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 a, it's, it's it's a synthetic also right it's yeah, not even it's not natural even, yeah, yeah it's not even natural and that, you know and that, and that is is to me you know the 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 fda jumping in on something like that going the wrong way right i mean i think that was approved and you know it just like comes out the wrong end the wrong way we need some uh some more uh some more families who actually use it and the, you know take the anecdotal and make it fact you know because for a lot of that in my own head you know i have to say it's anecdotal and this you know and this and that but in my heart in my mind i i truly know sadie would not be here today if it weren't for cannabis if it weren't for cannabinoids she wouldn't be here today, you know, and, and the, the people that you come across in the cannabis field, in the hemp field, in the CBD field, you know, what, whatever area it's been, I found caring, loving people, you know, that, that really care. I, I never knew, you know, Medical Marijuana Incorporated. And when I started, you know, advocating, it was because it helped. And I told my wife, I want to run out in the streets and like say, hey, we don't got to do this to our kids. You know right. what I mean? Like, why isn't this a first choice? Right. Why didn't you guys offer me something that, you know, pretty much known as work government, <laughs> medical field. They may not as much as a single doctor, but they're still, you know, the larger umbrella that no these things work they have to you know and there, there's enough anecdotal stuff out there that it, it's uh heartbreaking that it's, it was a last choice for us right you know? it, it 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 should have never been that way it should have never ever been that way so that's when we started advocating and it first one was when they wanted to ban edibles in san diego and i was like uh but wait a minute <laughs> my daughter's oils are considered edible, like the sickest of the sick they need edibles you know like so we they went can't, down to they the can't city. smoke it smoking is not yeah, an option yeah, i mean yeah. yeah how am i gonna teach my you know <laughs> daughter who can't even talk to smoke weed or you know blow it in her face or whatever but right yeah no you know and it's it, so that's where it started and we've come across some really caring people and uh you know, the Medical Marijuana Incorporated, they started Canaway and, and they're huge to echo. You know, they've, they've got long lasting relationships. Um, those brand ambassadors, you know, it's a very fortunate thing for them because they can, they can help other people make, make some money and have their own little business of, you know, CBD, which is fantastic. And, and they help echo out and and that way, the two sharing the two stories in people's homes, in their living rooms, that's where the change is happening. It's you know, uh, 100%. It's happening. I mean, it's happening in the living rooms, those conversations, the word of mouth, having discussions like this on a platform like a podcast, you know, and, and you're seeing it uh, really take shape as the states are starting to overturn these regulations, right? Yeah. While, while the federal government may be dragging their feet on this issue, um, the states are taking action, you know, and we're seeing that, especially this year with five yeah. other states having it vote on the on the ballot. Yeah. Texas, I'm here in Texas and Dallas, and uh, the Texas legislature met uh, Tuesday for the next 140 days, and marijuana is in their top five issues that they want to discuss. And wow. and and one of their issues related to marijuana is expanding their medical program because it's it's the stories and the testimonials that you're sharing. And that echo connection is sharing that that is really what's driving the momentum, you know, so it is making a difference what you're doing. And, and I want to talk a lot about that. So Brian, tell me about echo connection and like what y'all are doing in terms of advocacy and education around CBD and these other minor cannabinoids. Yeah, we have a, if, if you haven't seen the Echo Connection the website, please go there and take a look at it. There's a lot of information on there. We're, we're going to try and uh, make it a little more user friendly because there is so much information on there, but you can see family stories. There's hundreds of different types of studies from different countries that have been done, uh, including some, you know, from the U.S., et cetera, that uh, you can look up, you can type in say fibromyalgia or whatever. And you know, you can find some type of study that has been done or whatever on that, on 
the echoconnection.org webpage. We've gone into other countries, you know, we're uh, starting to go into Mexico, Brazil, Europe. So Echo Connection is changing minds and hearts across the world. That is amazing what our prior president, Andrea, did and starting to get that uh, going and everything. And I'm going to try and help and, and, and keep all that going and share some of those other stories, you know, like, hey, maybe some of these other countries, what are these other families doing? Let's, you know, talk with them and, and get them in, in front of us and see how we can help each other. You know, the, the more it becomes uh, a, a global thing, the more it'll become easier to become here, you know, legalized and, and yeah. from a schedule one drug. Is there, is there any common uh, types of responses that you're seeing? Like, as you approach people that say have no idea what CBD even is, like, is there a common kind of gotcha moment or, or response that they have when you're educating them around the can the cannabinoid? Yeah, there's a lot of them. I mean, when it says Sadie's case is extreme, you know, her, her illness is extreme and her recovery is extreme from, from one thing to the next, um, from people that I never, you know, like, heard of it or anything will say oh i saw you a little bit on there and i got chills you know watching your story you know or somebody with it knew sadie that uh like one of the nurses we were in the icu and i would say probably about three months ago we had to go to the infusion center to get sadie's pulse <coughs> checked and uh she was just like wow this is amazing the difference you know it's, it's chilling it's it's i'm getting chilled just like looking at your daughter, like, this is Sadie from the ICU, from when we, you know, the, the hospital we were in the ICU. We had to go through a temporary change to an ICU, so that's what she related it to, was like, no, you were there on the temporary change, right? And I was like, yeah, we went through that whole thing back and forth, too. She's wow. just like, yeah, I can't believe how much better she looks and how she's, you know, responding and everything, so... Yeah, and then she actually said how much better you guys look. <laughs> Which I was like, thank you. You know, I knew that all the help I can get with this mug. But <laughs> yeah, they're like, hey, he just you said, no, I meant like a little bit more sleep, you know. <laughs> you you look healthy like you've been yeah, eating yeah. meals and not skipping them, Scum you know. And, yeah, 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 yeah. So well, you know what? It, it makes me think about how much um resources and time and effort the government has put on prohibition of this plant when it's so evident the medicinal benefits in in Sadie's example you know like like the fact that there is so much negative out there and not st more stories about and the science behind why these yeah. cannabinoids are helping is pretty out it's outstanding it's pretty remarkable uh, the effort that they've put in uh, since you know when the 1930s starting in the 1930s it's yes, been crazy it yes and the war on drugs I, I you know i always thought oh yeah okay the war on drugs and that you know mexico and all these other places where they're shipping in and this and that those marijuanos was, yeah yeah but you know <laughs> once i had sadie my mind changed that war on drugs is against me and her you yes. Know, when you when I really think about it, that that's what it is. The war on drugs is against me and her, and and all I'm trying to do is give. You know, I was trying to send her off peacefully, and look at the side effect. I know she's got a quality of life that I could have only dreamed of. You know, it's uh, it's, it's okay, man. I, I it's hey, pretty, I, it's it's, it's amazing. It's, it's like, amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, to know there's people in states, you know, like uh, I'll, I'll, I'll admit it. I had when Florida, you know, they weren't legal. There was families that would fly out and uh, one of them that was like, okay, can I at least say how you give it to her and this and that. And, you know, may have left the bottle out on open, you know, on accident or whatever, and it may have been gone or whatever. But it, it, it's amazing that, you know, things like that have to go on to save a child's life for something that they know you can't even overdose from. I know. Uh, not not one reported one death. Not mm -hmm. one reported not death. One. And and that's what's funny. I always kind of bring this up under the schedule 1 criteria, you know, it's a physic it's got to be physically addicting. It's got it's got to um 
be chemically induced like right there boom you know what i mean like two things it's it doesn't it doesn't match the description of where where it's listed um so talk about talk to me about the the importance of broadening access to cbd um and and how we can advocate for more cbd access um especially under this new biden administration yeah, that one advocating under this new Biden administration is something, you know, we've been, I've been thinking about and how that's going to change. And we're so, I mean, he takes over tomorrow. Right. <laughs> and, uh, mm-hmm. uh, from there, we'll see how it goes. I think uh, for us, it's, I'm going to try and get, you know, what happened to advocate for my story and Sadie's story, what worked to do it here was the local, you know, going to the local city council meetings doing that so i'd like to kind of see there is some families that are very open to sharing their story and doing that and of course we have some here in the state some abroad but um concentrating here on the state is getting those more in front of their local news companies you know and and start that way um cbd access luckily there's a company like you know canaway medical marijuana incorporated where their CBD is industrial hemp, you know, that's imported. So it falls under some different regulations and can be distributed out through throughout the world, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so so th- that's a start, you know, and, but... And like you said earlier, like knowing where the product comes from, like how it's tested, yep. uh, probably not the best thing to go to a gas station and pick up a CBD product, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. Or like, <laughs> or, or Amazon for that matter, right? Yeah. I mean... <laughs> You want to make sure that you know the origin story of the company the name, and yeah. and the way in which they you know they cultivated, manufactured, uh, d- you know, tested and distributed the product. You know that that transparency is key right now, and and the yeah. reason for that is what we touched on earlier, which is the lack of FDA consumer oversight. There's a lot of bad actors playing in the space right now. You know. Yeah, yeah, and I'm about the only thing that gets done to them is they receive a letter from the FDA saying you can't make claims, right? <laughs> and then they seem to be able to still operate. Um, fortunately, though, a lot of those fall by the wayside. You know, I've I've seen so many come and go, mm-hmm. um, which is unfortunate and fortunate. You know, depending on which side of the, the realm they fell on. Um, right. But I you, it, sorry, go ahead. <clears throat> no, 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 that's okay. Well, I was going to say you brought up another good point and and that I'm glad you're doing that and you continue to do it is to just continue to tell these stories. I mean, your personal experience, Sadie with Sadie and then the other stories in Echo Connection and pitching those stories to the local media because you know, that's the first kind of entry level at the local at the local level where you could really start to generate more awareness and education uh, from firsthand testimonials, you know. And, and that's what I've loved about our conversation today and you sharing that, Brian. It's, it's really been touching and really eye-opening, man, to, you know, because you can kind of talk about this stuff all day long, but until you have yeah. someone who, who has experienced it firsthand with their young daughter, um, it's an incredible thing, you know? Yeah, I, I, I think. I want to give you the floor before we wrap up, and I, I just want you to, you know, just go ahead and leave the audience with, you know, anything you, you want, your thoughts um, or or where they can even find Echo Connection from a website and social media perspective. Yes, yes. You can email uh, echoconnection.org for the website. From there, you know, you can uh, apply to be a, a family that's supported by Echo. Uh, get information on there. You can email us at info at echoconnection.org. Um, we're always looking to share stories and uh, information. So feel free to give us a call anytime, uh, email. You know, I'm on Facebook, uh, Brian Aguera. And yeah, just uh, looking forward to do, doing some great things, you know, and, and uh, getting this stuff off of Schedule One and, and helping more people. Mm-hmm. Just continue to do that advocacy work that that y'all are doing, yeah. which is a great job. Um, yeah. And you at the helm as president at Echo Connection, Brian. I know that you're going to do a great job, man. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. 
and we we look forward to to following y'all's progress and uh and especially hearing the progress of Sadie man I want you I want you to come on um regularly if you'd like to share some of these testimonials yeah. from various um you know people within the Echo Connection network yeah, definitely. We'll work with Mary and get some of these other families with you. And yeah, maybe we'll come back on one time with Sadie if you'd like. I mean, she's usually, to be honest, we're never more than an hour away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're like the old, like they say, un frijol, todos los frijoles, right? One dream to get out of it. <laughs> oh, you lived in Mexico. So <laughs> yeah, we're, we're that one. We're usually all together. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, to families now, one thing we never could do before, we were terrified to leave more than an hour from Ravi's Children's Hospital. I know. You know they, they took us on a cruise and we, you know, seven days and you know, whole countries away. That's that's pretty cool. And I, I it, more of the families need to experience that, and just people in general, you know, people in general with good health can benefit. You know, imagine somebody like Sadie how much good it does her and I'm just my, like to myself, how much better it does, you know? So, well, I mean, and you know, you mentioned uh, medical marijuana Inc and I've had on Dr. Stuart Titus, the CEO, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. you know, he's, an awesome guy, he, he's awesome. And he's super, super knowledgeable when it yes. comes to the science uh, of how these cannabinoids marry biologically with our endocannabinoid right. system, right? Yeah, our CB1 one receptor, wants. CB2. our cb2 receptor and <laughs> and you know there's something to what you said about you know just the regular person benefiting from the plant because there is a such thing as being endocannabinoid deficient you know and not and, even know it yeah. and not even know it and we're putting a lot of other harmful things in our body like processed foods and sugars and all this other stuff where you know we've kind of moved away from from that plant uh therapy and that plant medicine so um yeah, man, I, I definitely want to have you back on. And if you have other, you know, families that that would be a good fit to, to share their story, I'd love to, to hear and talk with them as well. So we'll, we'll be in touch Perfect. in yeah. the future. And uh, again, I just want to thank you for your time and really opening up about about your daughter and the progress she's seeing with CBD. Awesome. Thank you so much for having us here. Yes. I appreciate it. Thank you. So Absolutely. Much, right. And, and thank you all for listening. Thanks, Bye. guys. Thanks, everybody out there. Appreciate it. Bye.